The year was 2001. The month and the date was September the 11th. September the 11th was one of the darkest days in America's history. It was a dark day because the Taliban had taken planes, America hijacked American planes, and flew them in the Twin Towers in New York and hurt and harmed and even killed many people. Also, they hijacked planes and flew them into Washington, D.C., into the Pentagon, and many lost loved ones and literally lost their lives. It was one of the darkest days in America. But that was another dark day. The good news that came out of 9-11, the light that shined even in the midst of the rubble, was a light that was shining in darkness that it made no difference what color you were, yeah. made no difference what gender you were, yeah. made no difference whether you was poor or prosperous. One good thing that came out of 9-11 that everybody served and worked together in humility for one common cause. That was a dark day in America's life, but that was another dark day. This dark day is in this text that I'm about to preach and about to talk about. It was a dark day in Jesus' life. Jesus was on his way to Golgotha's hill. But the Bible says that there was a shadow looming over Jesus' head on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane where he was sweat drops of sweat as of blood and the Bible says that he was very sorrowful. The word sorrowful is lepeo, and it literally means to be stricken with grief from the inside that would manifest on the outside. This was a dark day in Jesus' life. He's getting ready to go to Calvary's cross. Are they going to nail his hand and nail his feet? And the Bible says they're going to pierce his side, and a crown of 72 thorns will be pressed down into the skull and the head of Jesus, and the blood came streaming down. All I'm trying to say, this was a dark day in the life of Jesus. If you read this account in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they have a similar but different account than John had. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it tells us that Jesus was sitting at the table, but John said it was right before the Passover time. And while he sits at the table, the Bible says that Jesus tells his disciples that this night one of you is going to betray me. The Bible says they begin to look at one another and say, Lord, is it I? Is it I? And the Bible says that Jesus said, it's the one who dipped with me in the cup. He looks at Judas and he tells Judas, whatever you're going to do, do it quick. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says Jesus gets up from the table takes off his outer garment, takes a towel, girds himself, picks up a bowl, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. I want to pick up there and deal with some principles that I believe will help us in this Christian journey or in this Christian life. John said that Jesus had already knew that his hour had come for him to depart out of this world. I'm in John chapter 13, verse 1. He knew that it was time for him to leave. And he knew, his father knew how much Jesus had loved his disciples. And the Bible says, for the devil had already put it in Judas Iscariot's heart to betray Jesus. And the Bible says, watch this, that in verse 3 and in verse 4, that Jesus tells us what he already knew but also he told us what he would also do in verse 4. Are y'all still here with me? First thing I want you to see in the ministry of the towel, and the towel is a symbol of submission, the towel is a symbol of service, in the midst of Jesus picking up a towel, the first thing I want you to see, I want you to see his demonstration. With the garden of the seminary looming over his head, with the shadow of Calvary on his mind, the Bible says that Jesus began to demonstrate his love and affection for his own disciples. Are y'all praying with me? The Bible says he rose up from supper. 
He laid aside his garment or his robe, takes a towel, girds himself, pour, get a basin, pour water in a basin, and wash the disciples' feet, and wash, wipe their feet with the same towel. You and I got to demonstrate the same love that God demonstrated unto the disciples. The same humility that he had in the midst of this dark day, the Bible says that we got to learn to love one another as Christ loved the church. Matter of fact, John 13, verse 34 and 35 say, A new commandment I have given unto you is that ye love ye one another as I have loved the church. And then he says, By this all men shall know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. Are y'all praying with me? And one of the darkest days in your life, what is it that you would do? How is it that you would feel? Or what is it that you would think when you're going through a dark day in your life? This is the way we demonstrate the love of God through humility and loving one another. There are three ways that Jesus demonstrated his humility and his love towards the Christians or the disciples. Can I give them to you? Number one, he demonstrated his love and his humility, here it is, by surrendering himself. The Bible said he laid aside his robe. He gave up his garments. He took off some stuff. He laid aside some stuff. In other words, if you and I are going to surrender ourselves to God and demonstrate the love of God and the humility of God, you and I got to disrobe ourselves. There's some stuff that we got to take off. There's some stuff that we got to lay aside if we're going to love one another. In other words, we got to learn to lay aside hate. We got to love to take off strife. Come on, y'all. Pray with me. We got, to we got to learn to lay down some things if we're going to show the love of God. Matter of fact, the Hebrew writer says it like this. He says, we have to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily entangles us or besets us. In other words, we got to surrender ourselves. The most powerful person in the world, the strongest point of his life is when he surrendered himself not to the will of the people but to the will of God. Now not only did Jesus surrender himself, but secondly Jesus served in the sanctuary. Are y'all praying with me? He demonstrated his humility and his love by surrendering himself, but also by serving in the sanctuary. The Bible said he took a towel and girded himself. To gird oneself with a towel speaks of the service. Now if the cross is a symbol of sacrifice, if the cross is a symbol of salvation, then the towel is a symbol of service. Are y'all praying with me? Notice, notice what he does. He took a towel, the Bible says. In the midst of this darkest hour, in the midst of Calvary, on his mind, in the midst of the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he took a, he took a towel. In the darkest hour of Jesus' life, they're on their way, the Roman soldiers, to get Jesus, and guess what he do? He picks up a towel. I don't know about you, but if they was on their way to get me, I wouldn't be picking up a towel. I believe I'd have picked up a gun. They had guns. They had sword on their way to get Jesus. And what do we do in one of the darkest hours of his life? He picks up a tie. Are y'all praying with me? Not a gun, but a tie. Not a sword, but a tie. Guess what? He did not lay down his religion. Come on and pray with me. Because you know when we're facing dark hours, when people have hurt us, when people have lied on us, we will lay down our religion and pick up something else. But here's Jesus submitting himself, surrendering himself, and serving in the sanctuary. The Bible says he picks up a towel. The ministry of the towel shows the service and picking up one another. Here they are, sitting in the midst of Jesus at communion. He gets up, picks up a towel, and the Bible says that he used the time. Because sometimes we'll pick up and start serving, but we'll stop. Not, not only should we surrender ourselves, not only should we serve in the sanctuary, 
but we should also sanctify the saints. Yeah. Told you he demonstrated himself in three ways. He, he begins to sanctify, watch it in the text, the saints. He not only takes up his robe, he not only take a towel, but he also took a basin. Yeah. 